I never give in to physical vibes with Keith because it's not, it doesn't really get you anywhere. When you think of famous feuds in music, you might think of groups like The Kinks, Pink Floyd or Oasis, each with their own legendary storied history of disputes. One group you probably wouldn't think of is the Rolling Stones. They are still going strong today after all. Despite being one of the most influential groups of all time, helping to define the rock and roll landscape in Britain, they weren't without their own fair share of squabbles. While Mick Jagger and Keith Richards, the two driving forces behind the group, appeared to be best buds on the surface, beneath there was a far tenser situation bubbling away. Despite ultimately being able to put this feud aside for the sake of the music, there were periods, particularly in the 80s, where it could have been the premature end of the Stones. So where did the feud come from, and what was the one thing that kept the Stones from imploding? Oh, and by the way, massive thanks are in order, I've just reached 2,000 subscribers on here, which is bloody brilliant and mad. Thanks for that. Right, on with the video! Hi, I'm Adam, welcome back to Music Mongoose. Let's begin at the, uh, beginning. Jagger and Richards both grew up in Dartford, Kent, just a few streets away from each other. In fact, just recently, Dartford Borough Council unveiled two bronze statues of Jagger and Richards, and they are definitely completely lifelike and definitely not nightmare fuel. Both lads initially met as kids, as both attended Wentworth Primary School before going separate ways at secondary school. Mick went to Dartford Grammar School while Keith opted for Dartford Technical High School. It wasn't until 1961, when both were around the age of 18, that they'd meet again at the Dartford train station. Platform 2, to be precise. Keith Richards was waiting there, holding one of his Chuck Berry records. Now, Keith must have thought that he was the only Chuck Berry fan for miles around. But on that morning, some kid came up to him and revealed himself as a fellow Chuck Berry fan. And the two fell into a deep conversation about their mutual love of Chuck Berry and rhythm and blues. If you hadn't guessed, by the way, that person was Mick Jagger on the, on the, yeah, okay. From the very beginning, it was music that united the pair. How bloody poetic. Mick and Keith, now best buds and both budding musicians, spotted an advert for a rhythm and blues club starting in Ealing, London. There they'd meet Brian Jones, a musician from Cheltenham. Brian would go on to form the Rolling Stones with Mick and Keith in 1962. Despite being Jones's band, Jagger and Richards quickly proved themselves to be a formidable writing duo. From their second album, they were the primary songwriters for the group, producing albums like Aftermath and Let It Bleed. Jones would develop serious alcohol and drug problems, leading to his dismissal from the group in 1969. Mere days later, he passed away. He had drowned in his swimming pool in East Sussex. From there, in the early 70s, it was relatively plain sailing for the Rolling Stones, releasing monumental albums like Sticky Fingers and Goat's Head Soup to great critical and commercial success. 1977, though, marked the point where the feud really started to heat up. Keith Richards was arrested by Canadian police for carrying a boatload of heroin. He'd been using the stuff for about 10 years. And while it did cause some issues in recording sessions in the mid-70s, the true weight of the problem really presented itself when he was arrested. Richards went on trial for possession and was facing seven years in prison. Luckily, he was ordered to pay a $25,000 fine instead, and was forced to enter a rehabilitation program. During this process, of course, Richards wasn't around to steer the ship with Jagger, so he became the sole runner of the Stones. In his memoir, Life, Richards looks back at this period. Mick looked after me with great sweetness, never complaining. He ran things. He did the work and marshalled the forces that saved me. Mick looked after me like a brother. Over the next year or so, working on his sobriety, Keith Richards realised that he didn't have the same influence over the group anymore. Mick was truly running the ship. And, quite rightly, Mick didn't want to share 50% with Keith anymore, which only upped the tension. While mainly kept out of the public consciousness, this was the period the feud was at its feudiest. The ordeal with Keith's arrest, coupled with the new MTV era taking hold, led Jagger to forcing the band to adapt heavily in order to keep up with the current pop landscape. Richards would find these orders hard to swallow and reportedly refer to Mick Jagger as Your Majesty during that period. Very mature. In 1980, the Stones released Emotional Rescue. The closer of this album is, of course, All About You, a song performed by Richards. The song is about someone with an overinflated ego who thrives on attention. Now, at the time, Richards was going through a separation from Anita Pallenberg. 
so it's easy to think the song would be about her. But Keith later revealed the song was directed more towards Mick Jagger. Gives me Fleetwood Mac vibes, that does. No, John, I promise, the song is about my dog. I'm not having an affair, it's about the dog. Just as the boys united at the very beginning through a mutual love of music, it seems music is a crucial tool for communication between the pair. The final line of the song, which Keith has publicly dedicated to Jagger, So how come I'm still in love with you? Symbolically, that line is brilliant. For me, there, Keith is saying, despite the feuds, despite the arguments, I'm gonna stick around because I love Mick Jagger, but more importantly, I love the music that he makes. Despite the sweetness in that final line, it didn't quite mend bridges in the relationship. By 1981, the pair were hardly talking. Seems like a good place to pop up here and say that if you've made it this far in the video, chances are you're probably enjoying it, so could you please press the like button down below? That would be a massive help. And subscribe as well so you never miss any of my future videos. If you don't, Mick Jagger will visit you in the night and softly whisper the entire lyrics of Dancing in the Street in your ear. And you don't want that, do you? When recording Tattoo You, Jagger would record in the mornings and Richards would record in the evening, as to not cross paths. Despite this, the album was a huge success, mainly thanks to the hero, Chris Kimsey. He was the sound engineer for the album and he went back and used some old recordings when the pair weren't feuding as hard to really bring that album to life. Dirty Work, however, was much the opposite, a relative disappointment from the Stones a result of a fractured friendship. I like to compare Richards and Jagger's relationship to that of Dave and Ray Davis of the Kinks. Although Jagger and Richards obviously aren't brothers, I do think their shared experience from a really young age do give them that certain brotherly characteristic of their relationship. And just like Ray and Dave, despite all the squabbling, they would always find their way back to each other. Keith's marriage to Patty Hansen in 1983 is a good example of this. Mick was his best man. In a later interview, Keith would summarise his relationship with Mick. With any band that's been around even for a few years, not everybody always likes everybody. But maybe you need that conversation to continue. And music is the one way you can do that. It's stronger than the other things that get in the way. From this point on though, the Rolling Stones looked as if it was grinding to a halt. Both Mick and Keith had embarked on solo careers, almost trying to prove to the other that they didn't need them. In 1986, after the disappointment of Dirty Work, Mick sat down for an interview, in which he said, We've had a lot of ups and downs, and this is one of the low moments. I love the Stones, I think what we've done is wonderful, but I also think it's done. Richards, in his memoir, Life, would later refer to this period as World War III, the point at which those tensions were highest, the point at which the Stones seemed like they were finished. However, the solo careers never really took off, and Keith and Mick found themselves drawn to each other. Why? Well, the same reason they bonded in the first place. The music. When those two are together playing music, they pull things out of each other. Producing the incredible Stones music that generation after generation have come to admire. This is why the Stones survived the feud and are still going to this day. My main means of communication is through music, says Richards. Call it a gentleman's agreement or something like that. It's unspoken, but I notice that many of the barriers, or whatever you want to call them, tend to disappear once we start working. And of course, the Stones are still going strong. In 2023, they released Hackney Diamonds, their 24th British album, 26th American album, but who's counting? The point is, 60 years. 60 years they've been together. 60 years of making music, touring, and feuding, but most importantly, surviving that feud. And not only were they feuding with each other, they also had a massive rivalry with the Beatles to contend with at the same time. You can click the video here for that one, and I'll catch you next time on Music Mongoose. Alright then, bye bye!